Well guys, I've procrastinated on this tool from Cobalt and uh, I decided to give it a try. I wasn't quite sure how these blades are because the wood blade is not a conventional type wood blade. So I thought, well, let me try it and can always return it, I guess, right? Auxiliary handle. This looks like the uh, dust shoot collection. And let's see. Allen key for your uh, probably your arbor, your lockdown, and then your three blades and a manual. This is the Cobalt 24 volt max 4 inch brushless cordless circular saw. It is the item number 961863, model number KMC124B 03. Alright, so it's 24 volt motor, 12,000 RPMs. And it can cut into a variety of materials such as wood, metal, brick, and ceramic tile. The cutting depth max is 7 eighths of an inch. And of course you could do cutting, plunge cutting, grinding, and flush cutting with this. And the arbor diameter is 7 sixteenths of an inch. Saw blade diameter 3.9 inches. Now here's some specifications that are on the box. And notice where it says the compatible blades. So you've got the cobalt, and then you got Dremel. So I thought that was interesting. So I went over to the Dremel tools at Lowe's and uh, noticed uh, some interesting things. So here's the Cobalt. It's $19.98 for this three-piece set. And the Dremel is $39.99 for essentially the same thing. Let's take a look at those. So the Cobalt's half the price of the Dremel, and the tool says that they that these will fit. So if you look at the wheel on the very left here, from the Cobalt 3-pack, 
that's the same as the Dremel Ultra Saw here uh, for the diamond tile wheel US 540 and that is $16.99 when you buy that separate the middle wheel in the Cobalt 3 pack is the same as the Dremel Ultrasaw US 500 for wood, drywall, and PVC. And that is separately $14.99 for the Dremel. Now the wheel to the very right of the three pack, the Cobalt, which is the cutoff wheel. Now they don't have any here at the Lowe's that I'm at, but the Dremel one would be this $9.98 for it for the uh, cutoff wheel, the uh, 510C. Now the closest thing that I see here at the Lowe's that I'm at in the Dremel tool is the Ultrasaw 3-in-1, the US 40-03, but it is a corded tool. It's not a cordless. And it is $129 for that kit. So here's your manual, your uh, five millimeter Allen key, Allen wrench for the arbor your three blades that come equipped then it gives you a um, pamphlet here that tells you the compatible blades that are usable with this saw now there's the three blades that come with the unit with the tool you've got a cutoff wheel for metal, you've got a wood cutting blade, and then you've got this wood cutting flush blade. It's a um, flush cut. This is the wood cutting blade. Let's take a close-up look on those teeth. This is what I wasn't sure of. They've got some really strange... I don't, I'm not sure how this is going to cut. But we're going to give it a try. Now this is the one that intrigues me the most. The flush cutting wood blade. Okay. I did not know this came with it. I thought the three blades that you saw earlier in my video that I showed, the comparison, you know, the ones for $19.99, the Cobalts, I thought those are the three that came in here. I didn't know this came in here. So what I ended up doing is buying the Dremel wood flush cut blade. Now the Cobalt multi-purpose saw does say in the box that this is one of the compatible blades so I'm gonna buy this from Dremel as I don't see uh, Lowell selling this under the cobalt name and it's a uh, flush cut for wood drywall and PVC pipe if you take a look at this that's kind of cool okay and that blade is 1999 which is the US 600 Dremel number. Okay, boys and girls. Since I didn't know that that blade came with the tool, you'll see in my clip that, my last clip that I did show, I bought this the Dremel equivalent. Now, that, that was $19.99 for that basically twenty dollars for one blade so 
So I go online and I find that you can buy, here's the information, you can freeze the uh, frame. This is the cobalt information. You'll see a three pack, three of these flush cut blades for $29.98 on the website. I'm going to see if I can do a ship to store either way. Uh, either way, the uh, Dremel, okay, this Dremel is going back because at $20 for one blade, $19.99 versus $29.98 for three of them from Cobalt. Not a hard decision to make. All right, let's take a look at this tool. On um, the uh, grip, the handle, got a nice rubberized surface. Whatever material that uh, Cobalt uses for their plastic or whatnot. Okay. And, um... We'll take a look at the switch area. And it's got a protective switch. So if you go to turn it on, it won't go on. You've got this little thing that you've got to push forward, then go on. And it's kind of a fluid motion. It's not that big of a deal. Just like that, you know. And you want something like that. I think it is kind of nice to have, especially if you're using this for plunge cutting and you're getting ready to plunge, you know, this way that doesn't accidentally turn the uh, saw on. Okay, let's look at the uh, blade guard area in the shoe. They're made out of aluminum. does have this adjustable shoe you can see the depth markings on there millimeters on the left your inches the inch on the uh, right and this is the lock to release it and you'll see it's spring loaded see right here so that's kind of nice because you can move this and it won't flap around Set it where you want it. Clamp it down. Now it's got a blade lock here. That button that you push down. And you turn the arbor right there when it goes down like that fully. That now will cause the arbor to, to lock and stay in place so you can put a new blade on take a blade on or off and it has left hand threads Now I'm going to put on the flush cut blade because you'll notice there's two. Here's where a standard blade would go in like this. Okay. And this one will fit like that. And you'll still have the guard. That's really cool. Now one thing I'm going to do... I, I do notice that this has a little bit of buildup on here. It has some on this side, inside the, that cup area. I'm not worried about that. Uh, before I use this, I'll just sand that flush. I'll take that off, try to get that off. So that way, when that's sitting on here, there, there isn't going to be any run out because of that uh, the way that is. 
All right, let's put that regular woodcut blade in. Now these are left hand threads, so to tighten it down, you're going to go counterclockwise. And um, I'll turn this. Now you watch my thumb. There, it went down. So now there's the arbor lock. Now I can just tighten that down just like that. Okay, there's two other things I want to show you. One is going to be this handle that goes on the front thread it into the aluminum, it's an aluminum which is nice, it gives you some control if you want to do it that way I probably won't use it like that but if I ever do need it, I, I want some control that's there The last feature I want to show you on here is the dust collection. If you look in here, it actually passes through here and they give you this and it's kind of just a press fit. So you can actually, I guess, go forward or up. I don't well I guess you can't really go too far with it you can see it here so actually if you've got your handle on there you'd have to have it forward okay this is the inch and a quarter end for the uh, holes on my shop vac and that does go in here now it's really loose it's not gonna stay so um, I might put uh, masking, if I was going to use this, I'm sure I won't, but uh, I would put uh, probably masking tape, or I could even take an index card and maybe cut a strip and put that in here and use that as a shim just to keep it tight. So a couple different ways you could do that, but that's how that would go on there. Okay guys, this probably should go without saying, but I was carrying this and I accidentally bumped that little dead man there that uh, will allow the switch to turn on and I had the battery in there, so it's no different than when you are got an electric uh, model and you've got the cord plugged in, so anyways, I just learned something, I was kind of, I had this guard down. And the damn thing came on, just lucky I wasn't uh, near any of my part of my body, but in any event, so you just got to treat these just like they're plugged into a cord, and anytime you're doing anything, like even changing the blade, which I always, on my electric tools, always pull the cord, because you just never know if, if, if it's going to turn on accidentally, you bump something, whether it's on my reciprocating saws, or power saws, saber saws, I always do that. But anyways, I learned something today. I should have just pulled that off. I didn't have that off. Just thought I'd uh, state that. All right, I'm going to try a plunge cut here. And the beauty of this spring-loaded shoe is that you can gently push this down in, and it's uh, and then you can just it won't fall, flop down on you, and then you can lock it. So let's give this a try. I am amazed this 
is the first time I've even tried this. That's a pretty damn good cut. And here I kind of moved a little bit, you know. But you take a look at that. That's a hell of a nice cut. And that's what I was afraid of. I wasn't sure. Here's the bottom side. I wasn't sure how that would cut wood. Because it's not a conventional blade. But hell, it did a nice job. Project. We're going to try to cut it. Here's an end that was cut with my miter box. Probably, I think this is probably an 80 tooth blade. So that's the end that was cut from that. So let's give this a try. Okay, here's the end. Definitely not fin for finish work, <clears throat> but you know, if you're doing uh, this particular blade, if you're doing rough construction or anything, that would probably be fine. You're uh, cutting out openings, the roof, and, uh, you know, wall, something like that. Would be fine, but this would definitely not be a blade that you would use for finish work. see some of the blue and all of the uh, blade material. Alright, let's try a piece of plywood. Again, definitely not for finish work, but I don't believe that was made for, for finish work. It's uh, okay for something like this. Now on this quarter inch plywood, I tried cutting just part way in, and I'm going to pull this off so you can see. There's the blue from the blade, and it did a pretty dang nice job in that thin, that thin stock. So I think this would be a great saw for construction work. With that type of a blade that you're going to get. Try cutting this uh, piece of... Uh, you see pipe? And as to be expected, it does a good job. Here's some inch and a half PVC. Just see what this. I, it won't cut through it, obviously, but I'm just going to go across it and see. Nice job.
really well for something like that. Now if I'd have had this up on a saw horse, been a little more careful, would have done a better job. So that actually is not bad at all. If you didn't have a uh, miter box, I always like to cut with the miter box, but if you didn't, this would work out pretty damn well, the PCV pipe. One other thing guys, when I'm done with the tool, whether it's uh, wood, especially wood, chop saw, if I'm cutting metal, I always blow the stuff off. I always go around all the vents inside everything I just blow everything off to kind of keep the, the pitch from gumming up on it it's gonna happen over the over time but uh, you just uh, do it as you go along keep the tool clean you know and and the no need in having stuff build up when they're you know when you don't really need to that's how you get longevity on stuff okay and I really like this uh, cobalt saw that I bought but it cannot compete with this old Rockwell that I have, and I did a uh, review of it. I believe this thing is like 40-some years old, and uh, I used the hell out of that. Really a great tool. It's a four and a half inch Rockwell and uh, worm, worm drive, but uh, you can put carbide blades on it. I would really be really cool if you could uh, put, if you could buy at some point down the road carbide blades for the Cobalt. But in any event, even the uh, the teeth that come with it, this probably isn't a finish type tool anyways, so it really doesn't matter. Like I said, I did a lot of finish work with that uh, Rockwell, but uh, in any event, the Cobalt still uh, has a place in my toolbox.